So starting team projects for the first time can feel intimidating, but in this video, I'm gonna break it down for you. Let's go ahead and jump on in. So there are two ways to start a team project. You can go to file, you can go to new team project, or in the home screen, you can go to new team project. And when you click on this, you will get a little window here and you can give it a project name. And here, the most important part, adding your editors or collaborators. So click on edit, and then here you can type in the email of the person. And the best part is, is that they don't have to be a part of your Adobe Creative Cloud team. They can have their own individual account. Just make sure it's their Adobe Creative Cloud email address, put it in here, and then you can click on invite. And then it will say invite pending until they accept it. So go ahead and hit close now, and now press okay. So it pretty much looks like a standard project. The main difference is, is up here, you can see the project name with a cloud with a check mark, meaning that it's saved to your Adobe Creative Cloud. It's actually not saved on your local drive. And over here, you can click on this number and this shows the number of collaborators in the project, who's online and who's been invited. You can also click this icon if you wanna invite more users. Now, one thing I recommend doing is going first to your file and going to team project settings. For the scratch disk, I recommend saving this to a shared project folder. So if you use Dropbox or Box or Google Drive, I recommend getting the desktop app, which is what I have. And I set each of my scratch disks to a shared project folder. So that way we can all access this if Premiere Pro saves anything, for example, motion graphics template media. So just click on browse, navigate to that project folder. And then I recommend creating a folder called scratch disk and just save it here and click choose. And then do that for every single one here. And then once you set all of them, hit okay. So if you're on the receiving end of this, let's say you're one of my editors, how do you open this team project? Well, you can go up to file and go to open team project. And then rather going to team projects, you're gonna go over to invites first. You can see I have an invite from one of my other editors here and you can accept it. And then you will be able to choose it from this drop down and then open it up. Also, you might be wondering, what if you started it as a regular project? Can you convert it to a team project? Yes, you can. So here I have a regular project open. You can go up to edit and go down to team project, convert project to team project. So now how do you work with media? How do you ensure that the other people on your team can access that media as well? Well, we use Dropbox. I have a team account and all of my editors are invited to that team account and they've downloaded the Dropbox for desktop app. So after you have the desktop app installed, you can see here that I have it, Premiere Gal Dropbox, and I have a shared editing team folder. And inside of the Gal edits, we have our current edits and recurring assets. And what I like about Dropbox to save space, you can actually make some folders online only and only sync select folders. For example, this project here, I can choose to make online only. So that way it won't take up space on my drive. Here inside of this folder, you can see I have our project folder, which is where I saved our scratch disk and Premiere Pro made all of these folders here. In our media folder, this is where my editors and myself will add footage and it's all synced to our computers we all have access on our local drive. So the stock video that my team and I use all the time is from Envato Elements, who is the sponsor of today's video. So here from Envato Elements, I can search by a keyword, for example, team editing, and I can go down here and download it for this specific project. And I can do the same for sound effects and music. So if I need some cool bubble sounds like bubble pops, I can download these as well. And we can go to video templates if we want to search for some titles, motion graphics templates. Otherwise, I like to call them Mogerts. And I can go through here. And if I like a few that I want to use in this project, I will download it and I will also save it to the Dropbox folder. So now that everything is downloaded, I can uncompress the ones that have multiple graphics in one. And then I can move these downloads into the corresponding folders that I have in the team project that I set up. So that way my editor can access it when I invite them to the team project. So if you wanna start trying out Envato Elements for your own projects, you can use my link below to get 70% off your first month to try it out. And our favorite part about using Elements is that it's unlimited. So you can download as much as you want to try out in your project. So that way you don't 
don't have to worry about paying per asset and wasting money on other assets that maybe didn't work out. Use my link below. Thanks so much to Elements for sponsoring. And now let's show you how to import the media. So now I'm going to press shift and select the music, sound effects, and stock video folders that already have the media inside and drag and drop it into my team project panel. So here we have all of our footage imported. Let's say we wanted to create a sequence. Just right click on one of these clips, go down to new sequence from clip. And here we go. We can rename this to rough cut. And notice how it says unpublished bin, unpublished movie, unpublished sequence. And that's because I haven't published any of these assets to be updated into the team project. So the editor will not see it if I do not click publish because I imported all the assets and I'm ready to hand it off to the editor. I'm just going to click on publish and then it will ask, you know, do you want to publish all of these? And I will select publish. And now it says it's up to date. So now when my editor opens the team project, she will see my sequence and all of these assets as well. And if anything is offline, the editor will be able to reconnect it to that shared folder that they have on their computer from our Dropbox account. So you would just select this, link media, and this looks the same as for standard projects. And I can reconnect it back to the same stock video folder and press OK. And now it's back online. So you remember when we set up the team project settings, I had you set the scratch disk to a scratch disk folder inside of a shared project folder, specifically for the motion graphics template media. So let's go get one of the motion graphics templates that we downloaded from Envato Elements. Let's drag this into our essential graphics panel. And here we have it. If we drag and drop this into our timeline, Premiere Pro also created this new folder called motion graphics template media. And inside of it is the uncompressed Mogrit file, which is actually a .ae graphic file that Premiere Pro creates. And it actually created it inside of that scratch disk that we set up before. So if I go into the project folder here, scratch disk, you'll now see in motion graphics template media that it now has this .ae graphic file, which is the uncompressed Mogrit file. And the reason why it's important to have it here is let's say something gets offline, the editor who opens the team project will have access to this shared motion graphics template media to reconnect it to this AE graphic. So I know that was a lot to wrap your head around, but basically with Mogerts, it's important that the people editing the projects also has access to this AE graphic file as well as a backup on their Dropbox desktop app. So lastly, the other thing you might be wondering about is autosave. So here inside of a team project, actually go to edit team project, go to browse autosaves. This will bring up auto saves window. And on the left, you can choose which team project you wanna go back to a different auto save. So like test project in our case. And then here you have this timeline. So you can scrub through to a later auto save and you'll see that different folders are available because this will go back in time. So let's say we wanna go here, then we can right click on this test project and we can make auto save the latest if we want to go back in time to that moment, or you can create a new team project from this autosave. But if you're working on a project that has tons of footage, like a TV show or a film, I actually recommend using Premiere Pro Productions instead of team projects. So you're definitely going to want to check out this video here that I detail on how to use productions because it's also different than team projects. So as always, keep creating better video with Gal and I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm-hmm.